Question 9. Given y is equivalent to 3x squared minus 4x plus 6, and there is a small change in x by p percent when x is equivalent to 2. Find the corresponding percentage change in y. The tell us that x is going to experience a small change which is the p by p percent, but the original x is 2. They ask us to find what is the changes in y. So they ask us to find delta y, and they tell us that the original x is eventually 2. And the delta x is going to be a p percent. p percent means that it's a p over 100 times the original x, which is 2. So this is why we have 0.02p. So if they say how many percent, you just put on top of the fraction of 100, right? So next, what else do they tell us? Huh, I want to find what is the y ori as well. So let me find y ori is eventually by substitute the x ori into the equations, which is 3 bracket 2 square minus 4 times 2 plus 6. So if you plug into your calculator, you will have 10. So after finding y ori, we are going to use differentiation as our approximation tools. So we're going to find our dy over dx. So we know our dy over dx is equivalent to 6x minus 4, which is 2 go down 3 times 2, is self reduced by 1. And this one, 1 go down 4 times 1, is self reduced by 1. Is how we get 6x minus 4. Once we've done everything, we can proceed to find our small change in y by using differentiation. I can say that the delta y over the delta x is a very good approximation by using dy over dx. Since we are looking for delta y, we're going to move the delta x to the other side. What's my dy over dx first? Is 6x minus 4. What's my delta x? Times 0.02p. Then, what else? But we know our x is still unknown. So we're going to substitute 2 into the equations. So we have delta y. Usually the x in here is going to be our original x. So 6 times 2 is 12. 12 minus 4 is 8. So now we will have 8 times 0.02p. So now we can say that our delta y, 8 times 0 0.02 is 0 0.16 p. So we're done to find what is happened to our small change in y. But they ask us to find what is the percentage change. So in order to find the percentage again, whatever that we concerned divided by the original times 100%. So our delta y here is 0 0.16p. Our y origin is 10 times 100%. So if you use the calculator or you don't want to use the calculator, you can just simplify. This one, this one cut off, we left with 1.6p percent is our final answer. Question number 10. The diagram shows us the graph for dy over dx, which is the gradient, and d2y over dx2, which is the concavity, for the function of y is equivalent to f of x. It's given that this function is going to pass through negative 1.6 and 1, 2. Without finding the equation of the functions, determine the coordinate of the maximum and minimum point. So if they tell us to find the minimum point and maximum points, what do they tell us? So before this, we're going to understand what is the meaning by minimum and maximum point first. Eh? So in order to find the turning point, we must find the dy over dx is equal to 0. So that we know where do they turn. But in order to find whether it's a maximum or minimum, we're going to prove the concavity by using d2y over dx2. When d2y over dx2 is less than 0, or we say it's a negative, we have a maximum. When d2y over dx2 is a positive, means it's concave upward, then this must have a minimum value. Or we can say, we can say that the concavity is a positive. So this is how we're going to approach by looking at this graph, eventually the compose of two graphs, one is dy over dx, 
What is d2y over dx2? dy over dx is represented by the pink color one. So just look at the pink color one. Can you tell me that where do we have the value of zero? Huh? Is that here, right? Negative one and one. Those are the roots. So we know the turning point is eventually at negative one and one. Why? Because we know when dy over dx is zero, those points are the turning points. So we know our turning point is going to be negative one and one. But what are the coordinates of the turning points? So they tell us that when, when x equal to negative one, the point is eventually six. When it's equal to one, the point is two for the y coordinate. Why don't you just take the one zero and negative one zero? Because this curve is dy over dx. In order to find the coordinate, we need to go back to the y graph. But they don't give us the graph and they don't ask us to find the equation of the functions. But they could tell us that when we have the y functions, eventually it's passing through negative one six. So we understood that these points are eventually the original point in the y equal to f of x graph. And one, two is also in the original graph. So we're going to prove further whether this is a minimum or maximum. So we're going to do the concavity test. But they did tell us that d2y over dx2 is represented by this blue line. So we check first. When we have negative one, what happened to our concavity? So negative one, we have negative six as our d2y over dx2. d2y over dx2 is negative six, which is less than zero, means they are concave downward. So downward is a maximum point. How about now we have x equal to one? So we check one more time again. When it's one, the d2y over dx2 is six, so if d2 and dx2 is 6, which is a positive value, we have concave upward. So this is why we say this is a minimum point. So we can say negative 1, 6 is a maximum point. 1, 2 is the minimum point. Then we go for b, sketch the graph. Since we have two turning points, so we know we're going to have a cubic functions. So let us try to plot the graph now. So first, we're going to jot down the minimum and maximum point first. So the minimum point is 1, 2, which is here, 1 and 2, roughly is here. And one is negative 1, 6, which is the maximum point. So we have the negative 1, 6. So maximum points, we have something like this, right? This is the maximum point. Then the one curve downward, and this is going to be our minimum point. Then this is how your graph is going to look like. Question 11, they ask us to find the equation of tangent at point A21. So it means that we're going to draw a tangent line at this particular point. They ask us to find the equation of this line. Whenever we have these kind of questions, remember how to do? First step is girlfriend. Second step is selling popcorn. The third step is going to be every day. Or you can say that's a good student every day, right? So how to find the gradient functions? Just by using dy over dx. This is what we call as the gradient functions. So which is 9x squared minus 4. So after we found our gradient functions, we substitute the point that we want, which is 2, 1. So we can find the gradient by substitute the point. So 9 times 2 squared minus 4. If you use calculators, you have 32. So this tells us that the gradient at A is eventually 32. But they say tangent. So tangent means that they have the same gradient. So we can just construct our equation by using y minus y1 is equivalent to m x minus x1. So when you have the f numbering for y and x, just substitute the point that they're given to you here, which is 2, 1. So which is why we have y minus 1 is equivalent to the gradient is 32 bracket x minus 2. So now we just need to expand the equations. So we have y minus 1 
is equivalent to 32x minus 64. The negative one go over right hand side become plus one. This is why we have 32x. So this is the equation that is tangent to the curve at point A21. Then we done for A. Remember, it's just girlfriend selling popcorn every day. B. Find the coordinate of another point on the curve such that the tangent at the point is parallel to the tangent. So parallel means that they have the same gradient. So it means that at one of the point, they also have the gradient that is same, which is 32. So how to find which point have the same gradient, which is 32? Ah, we can use our master key. Our master key is our gradient function, is our girlfriend here. So we know by using this one, we can find the gradient of any point. So we want to say that 9x squared minus 4, when is it have the gradient of 32? So negative 4 go over there become plus 4, which is 36 is equal to 9x squared. x squared is equal to 36 divided by 9. So we have x squared is equal to 4. So x is equal to plus or minus square root of 4. x is plus and minus 2. So we know the point that have the gradient of 32 is either 2 or negative 2. But since 2 is already given to us, then we know that the another one must be negative. 2. So the another point must be negative 2. But since the answer is for point, you must give the coordinate. So if you know x is equal to negative 2, how to find back the y? Substitute back into the original equations to find our y value here, right? So y is equivalent to 3 bracket negative 2 cubed minus 4 times negative 2 plus 2. So just by using calculators, you can find out that the answer is negative 14. So now we can say that the another point is negative 2, negative 14. Hey, if you have any questions or would like to see any kind of video, do leave your comments below and let me know. If you want to support us so that we could make more video like this, the simplest way is just by sharing the video with your friends. Click the like buttons and consider subscribe to this channel. See you in the next video.